I'm going to teach you how to model, texture, and animate products in Blender like a professional. I'll tell you how you can make a bunch of money by doing this at the end of this video. And if you want to learn more about the tools and techniques that you're going to see me use in this video, then check out my Blender ebook, the link is below. Anytime you're ever trying to model something in Blender, you're going to need some reference images to look at as you're working. There are two kinds of reference images that you're going to need for every project. First, you're going to need a background image or a blueprint, and you're going to trace this image with your geometry, and that's going to allow you to very accurately create a model from an image. A good way to get background references is to go to Amazon, search for whatever product you're trying to model, find the one you want to make and open it up, and especially when it comes to electronic devices like this, the first image is going to be a perfect background reference. So open that up, right click, save image as, and make a new folder somewhere on your computer for this project. This is where you're going to save all your textures, all your reference images, anything else you're going to need for this project. So we're going to name this background reference and hit save. To load this image into Blender, go to top view, press shift A, image, reference, find your background image. You can scale it up if you want to, lower it down so it's not getting in the way of your modeling. And I also like to add a little bit of transparency over here on the side in this object data properties menu over here. We're also going to need a side view reference for this project. And to find that we can just Google PS5 controller side and we can now very easily find a side view background reference. So open that up, right click, save image as, name that whatever and save that as well. Then we're going to go to side view and we're going to add in this reference as well. These two images don't have the same size, so we have to rotate this sideways. Go to top view and add a little bit of transparency to this as well, so you can see both images. And we're going to try to scale this down so that it has approximately the same size as the other picture. It doesn't have to be completely exact, but the closer it is, the better. Then just flip this back sideways, throw it in the background, and you got your background references ready to go. The second kind of reference that we need is a collection of pictures of this product from various different angles. This will allow us to see the little details that we can't see on our background references, such as all this stuff in the front, the back and whatever other part of this object. I like to use this little program called PureRef. You can get it in three clicks for free. Just Google PureRef, click on download, do whatever you gotta do. And now you're going to get this little dark canvas, which is always going to stay on top of your screen. And you can very easily just drag and drop different pictures onto this canvas. The best way to get more references in this case is also to go to the Amazon page for this exact product, open up these images and just drag and drop them into PureRef. Get as many images as you can, the more the better. You can also get more images by just Googling for this product. But if you get them from this product, page on Amazon, you're going to be able to make sure that you're using the exact same model and that you don't have some older version or some off market shit. This is going to mess up your model. I usually keep this window on my second monitor, but you can also place it up here in this little corner over this outliner, which nobody ever uses in Blender anyway. Now we have all the references that we need. Let's start modeling. We're first going to model the rough shape of this object, and then we're going to start cutting the holes and adding all the buttons and all the other details on this joystick. Why is this thing called a joystick? That just sounds fucking dirty. First, we're going to add a plane, place that plane on top of this side of the controller, and in edit mode, we're just going to move these vertices around and align them with the background image. Then we're going to take this edge and extrude it down to here somewhere, and do this a couple more times until we get to the bottom. Try to follow the curves of the reference image, and try to use as few polygons as possible. Now, from what I did here, there's two things you have to take note of. The first thing is we're trying to use as little geometry as possible. The reason for this is because we're trying to model out the very basic shape of this object first. And if we have a whole lot of geometry, it'll be very difficult to model the curves here. If we have a whole bunch of vertices, we would have to move them one by one, which would not only take a whole lot of time, but it's also going to make it very difficult to get a nice and smooth edge here. If we model low poly, we just have to get the rough shape and we can always add subdivision surface later, which is going to allow us to control the curves better. The second thing you have to take note of is that all my faces have approximately the same size and shape. Now, when I say approximate, I don't mean exactly, I mean approximately. Obviously, this face down here is not exactly the same as this one, but we're trying to avoid having anything like this where we have a tiny face down here, a massive face up here, a very long and thin face down here. This makes it very difficult to model, and it's going to completely fuck up our workflow, especially if we're working with curved surfaces which have some details in them like this right here. We're trying to keep all the faces more or less square shaped. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, just more or less. This is called a sub-D workflow. It requires a good understanding of topology in Blender. I learned this shit from Thomas Cole in 3D. I also explained this in my ebook, but if you don't want to pay nothing, then go subscribe to Thomas Cole in 3D to get better at topology in general. Once we got the very basic shape down, I'm going to go to object mode and press control two. That's going to give me a subdivision surface modifier. Alternatively, you can just go over here, add a subdivision surface modifier, crank it up a little bit, and that's going to make your mesh appear nice and smooth like this. When you add a subdivision surface modifier, you're going to notice that your corners are no longer sharp. Now they're all nice and curvy, and you can adjust some vertices now to match your reference a little bit better, but don't 
don't worry about it too much yet. What you have to understand is that when you have geometry which is very close together, the corner is going to be sharper. If you have geometry which is very far apart, like over here, you're going to have a very wide curve. We're going to use this principle to our advantage to create the tight corners on this shape. But again, we have to be very careful not to get any very long and thin faces over here. So here's how I would tackle this problem. We're going to take this vertex over here and push it down a little bit like this. And this vertex over here with double G, we're going to slide it this way. Then we're going to take this edge and extrude it out to here, adjust this vertex. And now our topology is more suitable for creating this shape. Because now with control R, we can add loop cuts like this like this down here and up here we have much better control over these two particular corners here otherwise we would only be able to do loop cuts like this like this like this and like this and this will give us trouble down here and everywhere else around this model so now it's time that we add some more geometry that we can use to model here again we're going to try to keep everything even right now this face is a little bit different from the other so let's try to fix that the best way to fix that is to add a loop cut here with control r and another loop cut over here now everything is subdivided into smaller faces you can even slide this edge loop up and then another one over here maybe another one down here now we just sort of reiterated this model so we might have to adjust some vertices down here and place them so the curve matches the reference image if you gotta move around a lot of vertices to make a nice smooth curve it might help you to use your loop tools so go up here to edit preferences add-ons search for loop check this box right here and you now have a new set of tools which is going to allow you to keep your models clean and organized for example right now this kind of looks messy but we can select these edge loops like this go to w loop tools space and now all these edges have the same length and if we for whatever reason have some jagged edges like this which are a little bit sharp and pointy we can select that edge loop go to loop tools relax you can change the number of iterations you can also change the interpolation method if you go with linear and 10 iterations it's going to make it very nice and smooth that's going to help you a lot up here we're going to slide this edge up with double g and we're going to add another edge loop down here then we just have more geometry here which we can use to control this shape and we can almost perfectly align it with the reference image again i'm going to select some of these edge loops like this loop tools space i just want to clean this shit up a little bit now we got a nice surface which represents this part of over here but it's still completely flat and obviously it should be very curved like you can see over here in this reference image so to get the right curvature on this let's go to side view with three and we're going to try to align this edge loop with this line that you can see in the reference image here so let's take all this other geometry and lift it up that way we can separate this lower edge loop and we know what we're doing a little bit better we know that this is aligned properly from top view so you don't want to move these back and forth left and right or anything like that you just want to move them up and down so just take your vertices one by one lift them up take your time and make sure you get all the way down to the end of this curve remember that you're modeling with the black line that you see between the vertices and not the vertices themselves now we got a good shape for this curve we got to push this all the way to the end and a bit later we're going to turn this into a sharp corner i want this vertex to present the end of this line right here so from top view i have to make sure that this doesn't get too far out of line so i'm just going to push it inwards a little bit like this once we got this side curve under control we have to decide what we're going to do with this thing in the middle there's not really a defined line in the reference which can tell us very clearly where we have to place this curve we just have to kind of decide based on the shape that this curve creates from the front view so now we're going to take a look at these pictures over here we got a front view image which very clearly shows us the shape of this from the front that's this edge loop over here so we know that these two vertices are placed correctly because we just did that from top view and side view as well over here which means we can do whatever we want with this one and to make this shape we're going to have to push this further outwards and as you can see that kind of gets us closer to the curve here so it's quite clear that we have to move all of this geometry outwards a little bit but we're also going to have to adjust the height from side view because this is supposed to go downwards so we have to adjust this curve here from side view and to do that we're going to select the entire edge segment here lift it up a little bit to get to the beginning then once you align the front vertex we're just going to deselect that vertex and move everything else deselect the next one move everything else and so on now we get to the back side where we have to continue following this curve over here don't worry about this shape right now we're going to take care of this curve in a moment as well eventually we get all the way to the back here and it's kind of hard to see exactly where we should place this vertex so we're going to have to start taking care of this middle segment as well so this middle segment is going to have to be somewhere in between these other two segments but if we lower that down you're going to notice it's sticking out way too far so now we just got to push this inwards a little bit piece by piece and it's becoming very obvious to me that we're going to need another loop cut over here to support the shape that we're supposed to have because we can't push this too far out so just take your time to adjust this again there's no correct way to do this so just try to kind of eyeball it to get you as close as possible to the result that you want this is where shit can get very tedious and annoying especially if you're a beginner this is where you can lose your mind but don't worry you're gonna see me go through the suffering and you can just do what i do on top of that you're gonna be able to download this model on patreon so if you ever need a joystick you can just go get it over there you don't have to make your own from scratch we're also gonna have to
to lift this up and from time to time you're gonna have to go back to top view to make some new adjustments because we just changed everything so we might have fucked something up now like i said we need another loop cut over here and that's going to turn these long faces into squares again this is important because it completely changes the shape of this curve right now the curve has a very long shape like this but if we add another curve it's more balanced from this corner here this curve gives us some more work because now we have to take care of the bottom part a little bit better for example we have to move this geometry out of the way here and now we have some more space for all this and again there's no right way to do this just try to make sure everything is flowing well and take your time when you're doing this once we're happy with the shape that we have here let's go to object shade smooth and let's make these edges over here sharp the best way to make this edge sharp and when i say sharp i mean i don't want this curve over here is to select it press n in edit mode to open up this menu on the side here in the item section you're gonna have this transform menu find mean crease and set that to one right now it doesn't do anything but we have to do this on all the other edges that go around this shape so select them all set the mean crease to one and now you can see what i'm talking about we don't want no mean crease on this segment over here so we're gonna get rid of that we still need this to be curved as well as this part over here now again you might have to make some minor adjustments because you just change your shape now this surface over here is ready and we can move on to a different part of the handle now let's figure out a way to make this lower part of the joystick, the joystick, the controller. Now the problem is we got a whole lot of geometry here. And this is a problem for the same reason that we discussed earlier. The good thing is we got a whole lot of geometry here. And this is good because we don't really have to do anything else. We can just use this edge loop and extrude it down and create this lower part. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to select this segment, extrude, right click, lower it down, get rid of the crease on this segment, but we're going to keep this one for now. We're going to have to slowly start straightening this shit out gradually. Here's how you do that. Select the vertex down here shift s cursor to selected set the pivot point to 3d cursor then select this edge loop and scale it down on the z-axis and now it's just going to become more flat and it's going to turn into a straight line so we're just going to scale it down a little bit like this then once again we're going to extrude this and now we're going to line this geometry with the lower part of the controller now this is where things get tricky because we have to follow this shape over here and the front of the controller it would be great if we could use this as a reference for the front view but it's not really orthographic projection it's kind of like the camera that's looking at this is literally it up a little bit it's not really front orthographic projection so this will probably do us more harm than good instead i say we just kind of eyeball it so let's see what we can do first of all let's move this inwards a little bit and then let's try shooting this and bringing it inwards like this we can't see the curvature or the shape of this thing from the side view but we can see the shading so let's try a 700 iq trick go up here to this little arrow if you're in studio then switch to matte cap we're going to go to single in the single we can control the color of a matte cap so we're going to make that completely white and then let's pick a matte cap which kind of looks like the material of the joystick here also gonna have to remove the cavity so that we can see this a little bit better the most important thing about the matte cap is that they all have different reflections and different shading so this obviously isn't gonna show us anything this might work because we have a shadow below we have lighting on top here and we can clearly see the curvature here it's almost like looking at a map isn't it this matte cap is good for detecting imperfections it's very shiny so it's very easy to see when you have something going on but we don't need that right now just keep in mind this exists maybe it'll help you some other time i think this one's gonna do pretty well we have to keep in mind that this is supposed to be a sharp edge right here so let's select this Control e mark sharp object shade auto smooth now we can see what's going on here i think we kind of got it right but it's gonna be easier to tell once we connect this inside or whatever we got going on in the back i don't really have a good picture of what's happening at the end here but i have a picture at the back so it kind of looks like this black line just continues in the front here and we can just kind of use this to guess what's happening over there we also have this big black spot here so we're gonna have to keep in mind that this is kind of like a hole in this surface this vertex at the end back here we're gonna have to push it backwards and that's gonna give us this curve that we have for the beginning of this hole down here and it looks like this brings us to the other side which is this other white surface and it looks to me like we have to extrude this lift it up and now we can use this geometry to form the inside of this handle on the controller so let's select this in top view we're going to align it with the inner side and we're going to take the geometry over here bit by bit and bring it over here once we get past a certain point we're going to delete this inner geometry and before we continue moving up this shape let's take care of whatever's happening over here over here we can see the shape of this curve on the inside let's rotate this picture and if we look at it like this it can kind of put us on the right path so this curve down here is supposed to kind of follow this one up here except it slowly falls off and goes down and underneath the joystick or across the middle segment over here or whatever so we're gonna have to bring these vertices up let's make sure that these top vertices align with this black edge over here and then we can use these lower edges over here to trace this white line which is on the outside underneath this black line we're gonna have to move this one out a little bit this one as well this one as well and then eventually we're gonna have to take these two inner edges and we're gonna have to start extruding those to make this middle segment in the middle of this controller i also feel like this is supposed to be way higher so let's lift all this up and we're definitely gonna need an extra loop cut over here to give us some more control we also have some pretty bad topology down here so we need a new loop cut and this face is 
really long and really ugly. So we're going to tear it with V, bring this in, and then later we're going to figure out a better way to connect this. For now, we can even delete it. I don't feel like we're dealing with a loop cut right here yet. I want to take care of this first. So since we have this edge loop now, we can slide this one inwards to make this a bit softer and rounder. We can bring this one down here and let's go back to side view and then align some of this geometry with this white surface over here. This is going to have to come over here somewhere. And if you follow this curve, you can kind of try to predict that it's going to move this way and follow this path approximately. We know that it's supposed to follow this. So if this black line is somewhere over here in side view, that's this line. That means this lower black line is going to go somewhere around here and a little bit lower so we can select these vertices and from side view we can control that geometry and make sure it aligns the way it's supposed to with respect to this curve up here so this has to be a bit lower and then it slowly starts to fall off and move towards the middle of the joystick which like i said we're gonna take care of in a moment i think we got this pretty damn good maybe a couple of minor adjustments just to make this look a bit rounder and nicer we can move some of this geometry down bring this inwards delete this face to slide this one up and again these are just a super tedious details that i can't really tell you much about i'm trying to show you guys as much as possible but this is going to be different every time if you just know the tools and you understand the basic principles that i'm using which we talked about earlier you're going to be able to practice this shit and you're going to get good at it in no time now it looks like we're supposed to take this edge and extrude it inwards a little bit like this and one more time until we figure out a way to connect this down here now from side view we got to lower this also lower this and then we can fill this geometry like this and like this and while it seems obvious that we have to fill this face when you look at it from side view there's clearly a hole right here so let's go to google and try to find a different picture over here I found a very eye-opening reference. Let's copy that, paste it into pure ref, and let's compare it to whatever we have going on over here. As you can see, this black line comes in here. Then when it gets to the end, it's kind of like a ball. So all in all, it looks like this white shit is just wrapped around the black middle. So this has to have a totally different curvature. Something like this was more accurate, but I'm struggling to wrap my head around why we can see a white line over here, which makes it look like this is supposed to come all the way out here. But if you look at it from a side view, that is clearly not the case. I'm only doing this for the video, so it doesn't matter that much in this case if you're doing this just for your portfolio it's also not gonna matter that much if you actually have a client and it's super important that you get every little detail including this shit over here right then either you need to have this object in your hand so you can see exactly what's going on or you're gonna have to ask your client to give you some better pictures so that you can understand what the hell's going on over here until then i'm just gonna make my own version because my goal is just to show you guys how i do this shit so i can demonstrate as many tools and techniques as i can i think that's fair enough so let's forget about this for now and just pretend like this is all supposed to be a big black spot here. And once we got this shit more or less under control, let's revisit this area up here. We have a very long and ugly twisted face in here. So we're going to move this a little bit closer to try and get this under control. Move this forward as well. And now we have to figure out a way to connect this. I'm going to join these two vertices and start a new loop over here on the downside. Fill these two edges. We're going to tear this, tear it again with V, slide it inwards. Give me a loop cut in here to connect this, connect this. And now we're left with a triangle, which means we have the opportunity to get rid of an edge loop or we have to create a new edge loop somewhere. For example, we can select this segment and slide it all the way to the end. Or we can select this segment up here and slide it up here. Both cases are not good for us because they fuck up the shape. And if we add a segment over here, then we just get weird geometry. There's too much stuff down here. I think the lesser of all those evils is if we just get rid of this edge loop. And then we can just slide this forward to prevent any long weird faces. And as we progress, we're going to clean this up more and more. Place my 3D cursor over here on this corner. Select this segment. With the 3D cursor as the pivot point, we're going to take this and scale it down to zero on the x-axis. That's just going to straighten it out. It looks like we have to lift this up a little bit i'm going to take this entire surface then i'll deselect some of these edge loops i'll go to loop tools space that's going to give me even space on these edges and now it's a little bit cleaner now if you look at the front picture we can easily figure out what to do next we have this curve over here which makes this hole for the button so first of all this has to be much softer on this part but we don't want to fuck this up so let's place a 3d cursor over here select this entire area and just scale it up on the z-axis that's going to make this curve a little bit softer maybe we can place a 3d cursor over here then take this segment and scale it down on the x-axis to pull this out and again we just have to try some shit until something kind of works now we'll place the cursor over here take this segment extrude right click scale it to zero on the x-axis now we're just going to take this vertex and snap it here so it connects merge vertices by distance you can do whatever you want with this maybe we can flatten this over here and then we can take this edge loop extrude right click and push it inwards towards the middle of the controller so to bring it exactly to the middle we're going to 
place our 3D cursor here, then take this, scale it to zero on the x-axis while the 3D cursor is a pivot point, and now this is aligned with the center of the world. This is the exact middle of the controller. Now we just gotta make some adjustments down here. So we could use a loop cut right here, take this face and push it out a little bit like this. Give me another loop cut to tighten this up a little bit. And at this point, it's kind of inevitable to start adding a whole lot of geometry. So if we gotta do that, let's at least try to keep shit a little bit consistent. Give me two more loop cuts over here. And now on the inside of the controller, we have to lift this area up. This is exactly on the inside of this button. So from top view, we know that this is exactly right here. This is where we get this line starting to come up, which means we have to push all this forwards on the Y axis up to somewhere around here. And maybe we can slide some of these vertices backwards. And we have these vertices over here telling us exactly where this corner is supposed to be. So we can't have anything in front of this. Otherwise, we would see it from behind here. So instead, we got to take this edge loop and it's something sort of like this. This is kind of extruded upwards like this and it gradually comes up to the front and that's where we get this part. Now, of course, we need some more geometry so that we can control this shape and make it a little bit nicer. Maybe one more loop cut, push this inwards a little bit further. Also get this out of the way to keep a nice flow. We probably have to take this segment down here and lift it up a little bit because this looks stupid at the moment. And we also know that there's an extremity down here at the bottom of the hole for this button and then it probably has to come up a little bit. In fact, we can probably place a 3D cursor over here, select this entire surface, scale it to zero on the Z axis, maybe push this out a little bit. And now again, it's kind of hard to see exactly how this curve is supposed to be shaped. So it's kind of up to us. We can kind of do whatever we want to do, which is a good philosophy to abide to in life, but only if you're a follower of Christ, because otherwise you're going to end up shooting somebody in the head. Anyway, after a little bit more tweaking, and I'm not talking about smoking crack, we managed to get this under control a little bit better. So for now, let's just leave it at this. And maybe we're going to make some more adjustments once we start adding the buttons and whatever. I think this is more or less the shape that we're looking for. And I can feel myself starting to become impatient and aggressive the longer I sit here. See, normally modeling is chill, isn't it? But when I got to sit here for hours on end, I got to make sure that I explain everything properly. I got to make sure it's structured correctly. It's tedious work. It's mentally exhausting. So I can feel myself getting more and more pissed off as the minutes go by. So let's get the booze out and keep going. Once we're finished making this outer white layer, I think the hardest part of this model is finished. Now we can add some thickness to the surface, and then we're gonna be able to make this black surface in the middle. First of all, let's delete one side, then we're going to duplicate this side and scale it to minus one over the x-axis, merge by distance, correct the normals. This is just to make sure that we have the same shit on both sides. Take a look at my wireframe so you can see how good I am at this shit. This is what happens when you watch one Thomas Cullen 3D video. Add modifier, solidify, and now we can use this thickness slider to control how thick this surface is going to be. I'm not going to apply this modifier yet because I'm probably gonna have to change this later. So for now, let's just make it something like this. Then we're gonna fill out these holes here. And if we have to adjust the thickness, then we're gonna do that later. We're going to duplicate this object, then get rid of the solidify modifier on that copied version. This new duplicated surface is going to create this black surface underneath. And remember how I told you that it's always better to have low geometry? Well, now we have very few edges, which you can very easily just connect like this. And that's going to give us this surface that we're supposed to have over here. We can also just make some quads to fill this area over here. Obviously, this shape is kind of fucked up right now and we still have some work to do here, but we're going to take care of that later. It's going to be pretty easy to do. Now, we're still working with this layer underneath the white shell. We're going to take some edges like this, extrude that out and lift it up a little bit like this. You can push it forward, fill this side here. Now, it's definitely time to use a mirror modifier, so get rid of this mirror modifier. This reflection is currently a complete mess. This is because it's reflecting over the origin point, which is right here. To fix that, I'm going to snap my 3D cursor to this vertex, object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, and now it's mirroring across this point, so it's a lot better. I'm going to take this vertex and tear it with V, tear it again, slide this inwards to make some space. I'm just trying to prevent having a long stretched out face here. Over here, I want loop tool space. We're going to slide this inwards so this edge is at a better angle to connect with this one over here without too much twisting. Now, let's keep moving forward. We're going to extrude this edge loop, push it forwards, lift it up. And this is the part of the controller where we're going to add these mushrooms later. So scale this a little bit towards this point. We're going to try and keep everything clean so we can also fill this surface right here. Give me these two edge loops over here. Loop tools, space. Now, I got to add some color to my math cap because it's hard to see what's going on here. Then we're going to extrude this one more time and push it forwards. Again, bring this segment in. Then we can just fill this, correct this a little bit. And now we get to the point where we have this transparent plastic shit. There's some lights in the back. So this will be the end of this black surface right here, which means we got to control this edge loop. It's got to be perfectly straight. We're going to have to move this vertex out so that this edge loop over here aligns with this edge of the background. So we also got to bring this vertex down. And again, we got some tedious topology control. You're going to have to play around with this until something works. We're going to lift all 
pull this up a little bit, lift this edge loop up by scaling it down on the z-axis while the 3D cursor is over here on this upper vertex. And then we gotta flatten this shit out because as you can see over here, it's supposed to be almost like a flat surface underneath this mushroom thing. It's very important that our topology is very clean and balanced on this area over here because we're gonna have to attach a cylinder to this so that we can add the mushroom. Let's go back down here and finish up this shape. I'm gonna select this surface, inset. Now I just got some more geometry to work with and we're gonna try loop tools, flatten. That's going to make this surface flat. And as you can see, it's supposed to be kind of flat looking at this image over here. We're gonna add a loop cut over here to push everything forwards. Alt S to inflate this a little bit. Slide some of this shit around until it looks a little bit better. We're gonna have to move some geometry a little bit to fill this better. Although bear in mind, we are still going to adjust this edge here once we apply the solidify modifier to the shell. Anyway, I think it's good enough for now. We can revisit this once we're ready to apply the solidify modifier to this shell. On the inner layer, we're gonna have to delete all the geometry which is covered up inside here. But we're going to leave this segment to faces which is right next to the border because that has a big impact on the shape on the inside here. So we should be able to delete all this stuff like this. Delete faces. We don't need any of this stuff down here. We can delete this segment and again we're going to leave a border here. Delete faces. Get rid of this too. Now we can just slide this closer to the edge and that way we can prevent this surface from sticking out. Maybe we can lower this a little bit. Get rid of this face and connect this. Lower this. And eventually we managed to get this under control a little bit. We also got some problems down here so we're gonna slide this. Alt S to deflate it and push it inwards. And now we can move on to the next part. The next part we're going to focus on is going to be this little white surface in the front here. To create that, we're going to use this geometry because that's going to perfectly define the shape that we need here. So select this edge loop, P to separate it to new object. We're going to use Alt S to deflate that. And we're going to try to align it with the reference image like this. We're going to move these vertices around until we get a decent shape down here. And in the front of the controller, this kind of curves over this surface and it connects with this line here. So before we do that, let's try to fill this. And to fill this, we need to make sure that the geometry is on point. So first of all, we're going to place our 3D cursor over here. Take Take this edge loop, extrude right click scale to zero on the x-axis while the 3D cursor is a pivot point. Snap this to the cursor, merge by distance, then place the cursor over here, duplicate this segment, bring it to the 3D cursor, merge by distance, cursor over here, and duplicate this, bring it over here, fill this, and now we can go to face, grid fill, we're gonna do span 3, adjust the offset, and you're good to go. Before we bend this over the surface, we're going to lift these edges up a little bit from the top view. We're just gonna try to make them align with the reference better. Slide this out a little bit further, extrude right click lower it and now we just gotta adjust this vertex to make this part a bit more round object shade smooth and we're going to lift this geometry up a little bit to create a gap here where this light gimmick is supposed to be placed and now once the shape of this little surface is ready we can also apply a solidify modifier to that we very wisely kept this little piece of geometry up here while modeling the inner black layer and now we can use that to extrude out this little surface in the front here so we're just gonna extrude this down a little bit bring it underneath this surface here something like this will do i think we need to take this segment and push it outwards a little bit more now we can extrude this down and it will nicely merge into this front part here we're gonna try to move the geometry so this is more or less a straight line and then we can continue to the inner part where we can take this edge extrude it push it inwards towards the middle we're gonna align it here with the 3d cursor maybe a bit more geometry to control this curve on the inside and we're also gonna take this edge extrude it to the side slide this vertex inwards that's just going to give us this little corner piece which is gonna make this look a little bit more complete and then we gotta make this plastic band around here so we gotta connect this thing to this thing which means we're gonna remove the solidify modifier from this we're gonna join these two things into the same object use L to select both surfaces duplicate them lift them up then we're going to select a segment over here and a segment on the inside W bridge edge loops you just gotta make sure that you have exactly the same number of edges on both sides we're gonna do that on the underside as well and also on the other two remaining segments here now we gotta do a little bit more alignment work for example we're going to push some of this geometry inwards and then we can take this surface and separate it again give me some solidification we can separate Separate this, extrude, right click, Alt S, in vertex select mode, we're gonna invert the selection, X to delete faces, bevel the corners to control the shape a little bit better. You might gotta slide some geometry around a little bit to make this fit a little bit better. All right, next we're going to do the first mushroom, or rather the socket into which the mushroom is placed. First, we're going to define an area within which this circle is going to be placed. In this case, that's going to be all of this geometry. We can use our brush select tool and select all these faces. Then we're going to inset this surface and select some vertices one by one like this and slide them back and forth. We're going to try to kind of make this shape a little bit more round. Once we got this shape very loosely defined, as you can see right here, we're going to delete these faces, select this edge loop, go up here and check statistics, 
and you can see now that we have 14 edges selected here undo a couple of times until we get the surface back place the 3d cursor somewhere on these two faces in the middle shift a mesh circle 14 edges now this new circle which we just created has to be just smaller than the circle that we can see in the background here i'm not talking about the hole i'm talking about the circle which connects this socket to the body of the controller so that'll be out here now lift this circle up a little bit fill it add a shrink wrap modifier target the surface below and set the wrap method to project now when you lower this surface down watch what happens it kind of just conforms to the surface like a blanket or something but from top view we keep the same circular shape now apply the shrink wrap modifier join it together with the surface below delete the shape which we created earlier you might have to slide some geometry around to make this fit inside the hole and now you just got to start connecting this geometry we got to make sure we don't get any weird twisting like this so slide the vertices around to fix that and just continue to move all the way around this circle filling these edges one by one in this case it would have been better if we had a little bit more geometry because right now we have a weird distribution of edges around here and it's not very smooth we have some weird twisting and all this other shit maybe if we get rid of this edge loop it's gonna be a bit better but you might have to undo this add some more geometry here redo this or maybe reduce some geometry or whatever now extrude this up scale to zero on the z-axis to make this flat and now you can see where we're going at with this so let's scale this down to the size of the socket you can slide this edge loop back and forth a little bit you can bevel it do whatever you gotta do to make this shape look better now we just gotta inset this extrude it inwards delete the face at the bottom and now we can do a tiny bevel over here another tiny bevel up here i'm also going to add a one segment bevel to the base of this shape and now we're making some progress now this circle has 14 vertices but we subdivided it two times so if you subdivide this once you get 28 vertices then you subdivide that 28 vertices again for the second time and then you get 56 vertices so we're going to add a new circle in the middle here and that's going to have 56 vertices that way it's going to perfectly match with this circle here but we're not going to have to have a subdivision surface modifier on this we're just going to create this little inner frame around this mushroom extrude scale it down a little bit extrude it downwards scale this edge loop down to push it inwards for this part we're gonna delete the faces at the bottom because we don't need them maybe we can add some tiny bevels over here just to fix the shading a little bit now we can go object shade smooth and i think that looks pretty good now we gotta add the mushroom itself this should be pretty easy i'm going to add a circle with 14 vertices place that in here and give me two levels of subdivision now this is supposed to be some kind of a ball joint in here probably this part is not going to be visible we're not going to animate it so we don't have to worry about this too much we're just going to extrude this inwards and scale it down extrude it and lift it up and now we're forming the mushroom itself so now we can extrude this out again extrude it and lift it up fill inset extrude downwards correct the normals we're gonna mess around with the shape a little bit tighten this shit up down here a little bit bevel this corner and just keep working with this shape and adding some more loop cuts and some more geometry scaling shit up and down a little bit eventually you're gonna figure out a shape that looks good object shade smooth and we're going to create this pattern here later with a normal map we can join this into the same object as the surface below and then we can easily just duplicate everything and bring it over to the other side and next thing you know the controller's got some titties next let's move over to the front and make these buttons here now we already got the holes for the buttons over here we just have to make the buttons themselves so to properly make the buttons we have to use the geometry from around this hole i'm going to take this edge loop over here be to separate it then give me this part of the edge loop as well be to separate we got some solidification going on here let's apply that and get rid of this outer loop now we just got to connect these properly so let's join this with the outer object get rid of this snap this get rid of this fill this get rid of this bring this out a little bit and let's see how that fits into the hole now i think it's pretty good let's try pushing it inwards and extruding it outwards it looks like it fits quite well so we're gonna move with this we're gonna have to separate this thing into two buttons and it's probably a good idea if we get rid of some of these extra edges down here let's duplicate this so we have a backup piece from side view it looks like we're gonna have to deflate this a little bit scale down the inner segment so it aligns here and we have to move some of this geometry outwards so just align these vertices with the outline of the shape and the reference we can push this out as well and then we're gonna have to start filling in this geometry we're trying to keep all quads so we're gonna need another loop cut here fill this fill this slide this out object shade smooth and we're going to use this loop cut over here to make this gap between the two buttons now we're gonna bevel this two segments shape one then bevel this again with only one segment delete this face segment then slide these two back and also these two and we can just push these back and forth a couple of times to bring them down to the middle as well now we can very easily fill this by just connecting these two vertices give me a loop cut like this and fill these edges just down here and now we got to figure out a way to sharpen these corners a little bit i'm thinking we should do that with bevels so we're going to select all the edges which are supposed to be sharp that will also include these edges on the inside here these two edge loops like this we can deselect the sides and now if we bevel this this will change our shape the way we want it to so something like this will get us closer to a result obviously we still gotta fuck around with the shape a little bit before we do this maybe we can inflate this a little bit once we got a halfway decent shape for these buttons we gotta try filling in the back to make the back side of this button we gotta use some of this geometry extrude 
shoot it and push it backwards into the controller. There's some kind of a joint here. I don't know what that is. I'm just going to try to eyeball it and make my own version. So give me these two edges. Let's extrude them up and scale them down. Connect this. Three loop cuts. Fill this. Fill this. Fill this. And fill this. Bring my 3D cursor over here and give me these three vertices. Extrude right click and bring it over here. Fill this. Fill this. Push this down. Slide this inwards. And once we got some kind of a shape here in the back, now we can do this bevel shit again. So let's try this again. And I think this looks pretty cool. So we're going to take these buttons and copy them to the other side. And now we can start moving towards the final details like this charger here, these buttons, whatever those do, and a couple of other things on the front here. Now let's start making the really fine details on this controller. It looks like some of the reference images are lying to us because over here we have this black surface with some buttons on the back, but this doesn't look quite the same as this thing over here. And this is the one that we got from Amazon. So a little bit of Googling shows me that our controller is supposed to be completely white and simple in the back. That means less work for me, so we're gonna roll with that. Instead, we're gonna jump over here and try to make this little thing. To do that, we're gonna need some more geometry up here. Adding more loop cuts this way doesn't change the shape of anything. We're gonna take eight faces from the front here. Inset, edge rail, slide this down, delete this face. Maybe it would have been better if we got rid of this, then bevel this like this. And now we're only going to use six faces to make this little hole here. So inset again, slide this down, get rid of this, push this apart, scale it all down, and that looks fine. Now we can also get rid of the geometry behind this so we have an actual hole here. And then we just need a little cube which we're going to scale down, push it inwards and scale it up on the x-axis. Then we're going to take these faces, alt S to inflate them, bevel the corners. And now we got a little frame around this as well which looks a bit better. Then we gotta move over here on top and start making the buttons. This is gonna be tricky because we need to very precisely make some circular holes over here. So it's probably time to apply the subdivision surface modifier because we're gonna need more geometry for this. So first let's duplicate this. I'm gonna try beveling this little edge over here and then I'll delete that new segment just because I want to create this little gap here. Now I probably have to do some mean crease also over here in the front and now let's apply one level of subdivision and this might be enough geometry for us to make the circles but I'm not quite sure yet because ideally we want to use nine faces for a circle as you can see over here that would fit best but then we wouldn't have nine faces over here which we can use for the other circle. So give me another subdivision surface modifier place that above the solidify modifier and if we apply that now we should definitely have enough geometry for this. So now now we're going to try four by four squares. We need one here, one here, one down here, and another one over here. This should work pretty well. They're not perfectly aligned, but we should be able to fix that. So let's inset loop tools, circle, individual origins to scale this down. And this gives us some dimples here. So maybe we should do these one by one. When you create one circle, slide the geometry around it just to make it align a little bit better to prevent any squeezing on the faces or anything like that. That will help us minimize the shading artifacts that we're going to get from this. As you can see now, that looks pretty good. We can use a shiny mat cap to show us any perfections a little bit better so let's switch to that for the time being just repeat this process four times and once we got all the circles just delete those surfaces and i think that's not bad over here we have some other little bullshit so again we'll just inset some faces delete the surface in the middle and if we got a subdivision surface modifier before the solidify modifier then we can adjust the shape since we got the holes here we're going to use the geometry from those holes to make the buttons so take those faces inset them a little bit with alt s we're going to deflate them so they fall into the hole extrude right click alt s with all the top surfaces selected we're going to go loop tools flatten and then we're going to use some more supporting geometry to make this a little bit tighter object shade smooth inset this again to prevent the weird shading i think this is not bad this one looks a little bit fucked up so we're gonna try to straighten it out just a little bit something like this and now it's at least a little bit better it looks like it should also be a little bit curved which means we can't just have an end on here we need to have a grid fill let's try something like this and adjust the offset a little bit and then with sharp proportional editing we can drag this down a little bit and after you mess around with this a little bit it's gonna get a bit better parent this to the body of the controller i can't look at this shiny shit anymore so give me the old one and on the other side we got some more holes so we gotta do this one more time to make these other arrows over here i'm not even gonna bother trying to cut them out individually here Here's what I'll do instead. To do that, I'm just gonna use one plane and reshape it. Once we got one of these shaped out, place my 3D cursor over here, Alt E, spin, use duplicates. I want four copies. These line up almost perfectly. Now we're gonna use shrink wrap to project these onto the surface below. Apply the shrink wrap, join the two objects. Now we're just gonna delete a bunch of geometry on the surface below, and that's going to allow us to manually start filling this in. So far, everything fits almost perfectly, but I don't know if this is gonna be the case for all these other parts. Over here, we also got pretty lucky, but eventually we gotta add some more geometry so we can keep this quads only. Now, eventually we managed to fill this with absolutely horrendous topology, but I don't give a fuck. I'm just gonna extrude this down, delete the faces, 
level these corners and now when i subdivide this my problem is solved i don't even have any real bad artifacts over here so all in all thomas colin give me a rating of this situation from 1 to 10. anyway now we can take these edge loops from the inside of the buttons shift d separate to new object now we screwed up because i should have kept the geometry on these faces but whatever i'm just gonna use an end gone fill them extrude them down delete the faces below bevel these corners correct the normals just because this one is so bent i'll add a couple of cuts and then we're gonna parent these to the shell and my suffering is almost over before we start making the normal map details there are two final little things that we have to model firstly this little light over here i'm guessing this is like a charging lamp or some shit and then we got whatever this is down here i'm also thinking i should model the playstation sign but i'm not sure if that's the way that i'm gonna pick so i'll decide when i finish modeling this i'll take four faces from over here inset delete the faces we're going to select these two edges on both sides individual origins scale to zero on the x-axis loop tool space push these two apart we can bring these a little closer fill inset then we're going to extrude this inwards separate this face to a new object inset it again and delete the outer edge we're going to cut this piece up so we have quads only then we're going to extrude it one more time so it comes out deselect the geometry in the middle and bevel the remaining edges this is way too big so i'm going to redo this a little bit smaller then let's cut out this little shape here to do that i'm going to delete these faces down here bring these vertices a bit closer together and i want these corners to be a little bit sharper so i'll delete this face also get rid of these put my 3d cursor down here select these three edges on both sides extrude right click s to scale and shift x to exclude the x-axis now we just got to connect these vertices on the sides and now we have a lot more geometry that we can use to tighten this shit up a little bit now we can duplicate this edge loop it looks like we're gonna have to manually connect everything again and fill in this hole in the middle maybe we can grid fill a segment over here or we can select these edge loops w bridge edge loops now we're going to inset this only slightly delete the outer edge loop select all the outlining geometry like this and extrude it inwards do the same thing with the frame here and then select all the edge loops around this little gap and control b to tighten them up now i'm gonna apply two levels of subdivision and that gives me new geometry that i can use to make these holes here so select a couple of faces in the middle inset loop tools circle delete the geometry in a circular shape to make a circular hole and then we're gonna take two segments on each side like this and like this inset those delete faces and that's gonna give us whatever this is we're gonna slide this geometry down a little bit we're gonna try to turn this into a semicircle of some sort now we're gonna cut off one side we can copy this to the other side now the model is complete i am going to model this playstation logo but i'm not going to make a hole in this controller i'm going to make it look like there's a hole into which that logo is placed so the rest of these little details that i'm supposed to make here and here i'm gonna make those with a normal map now let's make a list of all the things that we need to make on our normal map first of all we need to have this logo then we need these nine holes up here we need a texture for these mushrooms which looks like a formula one mercedes-benz livery and the letters and numbers on these buttons in the front let's start with the playstation logo first we're going to model the logo by using a plane this little plane is going to shape this bar over here we're going to slide this edge down extrude it so we can get this little part here to keep the right direction here we're going to place a 3d cursor up here extrude this and scale it up same thing with this lower vertex fill this extrude this down and then extrude these edges to make this front part here once we added some more geometry up here we got a subdivision surface modifier then just rearrange some of these vertices so you can form this curve a little bit better give me some more geometry over here to tighten this up and then using the same technique we're going to model this curve in the background so just give me an edge over here bring it out to here extrude it like this come around here we already got a subdivision surface modifier so this is even easier now some more supporting loops right here and then give me the other side as well once we got the shape of the logo ready we're going to place the camera above it give me orthographic projection 1024 by 1024 is going to be the resolution of the camera zoom that in on the logo render image save as and this image is going to be named logo now on paint net i'm going to open up this logo give me a black background duplicate the logo layer effects blur gaussian blur i'm going to blur this a little bit and then use my bucket tool to fill this blurred area and that's going to give me an outline around this logo like this i want this outline to be a darker color color like this and the background has to be lighter than that if you imagine this is the bump map the brightness of these colors is the height and if you look at the logo you got this surface around here then it's kind of like a lower area which is the hole and then the logo sticks out of this so the hole has to be the darkest area we can make that black this has to be gray or something 
and this is going to be white. We're going to make this blurry so that when we turn it into normal map, it's going to be smooth. Now effects, stylize, normal map, and now you can see what I'm talking about. Then we have to make nine holes like this. This should be pretty simple. We're just going to make one circle, extrude it inwards like this and extrude it down. Make a tiny bevel over here. Delete this outer edge, shade smooth, then use an array modifier to stack these. We need five on top, then we're going to copy this array modifier and the lower segment needs to have four. Now shift A, give me a plane, scale it up so it's bigger than these holes. And this plane needs to be slightly above the mesh for these holes. Create a new material for this plane, image texture node, generate a new image that's going to be called holes normal map. Generated type is blank, check 32 bit float, okay. Color space, non-color. Select this node, switch the cycles, select the holes and shift select the plane. Go down to bake, big type should be normal map. Select it to active and we can preview this image over here. So when we hit bake, we just gotta wait a couple of seconds and this is gonna bake. We got a big mess because the normals are inverted. So select all the geometry, shift N, recalculate normals. And you can check that by pressing this button in your viewport overlays menu. This is the problem because all of this should be blue on the inside. Now just bake that again and now use this little menu to go to image, save as and save this as another normal map. I'm also going to make a simple bump map in paint, which is going to say R1, R2, and also L1 and L2. Now convert this into normal map and save this image. And now we need a normal map for this mushroom thing. I can't be bothered to model this, but I figured if I search for tread plate, this metal texture thing looks pretty similar. We can find this on an online texture library. Something like this will do. Now we got all our normal maps ready. Let's design some of the textures that we need here. From what I can see in this reference image, we're only going to need some very simple textures. We just need these shapes to put on the buttons. We need these little arrows, these little lines over here, and also this little text in the front. That's it. Everything else can just be made with very simple materials. Maybe later we're going to use a gradient to make an emission map for this light thing over here. That would be pretty cool. So all our textures are just very simple gray shapes on white backgrounds, which means we just have to make a new image. Let's do 2048 by 2048. A white canvas is fine. Give it my shape tool, rectangle. I I want a light gray color like this and then I'll just draw a rectangle then switch the shape to triangle let's add that as well then give me a circle it has to be the same size as the other shape so let's make it in here and move it to the side and finally we need an x so I'm just going to make two perpendicular lines like this and then move that x over here then like I said we need these little three lines so give me the line tool give me round ends and let's do one copy paste that once twice. We have another little line shape over here. So give me one line like this, another line like this, and then we're going to mirror this to the other side. To prevent me getting sued, my logo is going to be sun. We're going to compress that text a little bit like this. And that's all the textures that we're going to need here. So I'm going to save this image. It's going to be called shapes. Now let's go back in the blender and start applying some materials and textures. In the shading workspace, we're going to first add some very basic materials. For example, this inner surface needs to be black. So give me a new material. We're going to name that black plastic. Give me a black color. It should be a little bit more rough than this. So something like this will do. Then give me white plastic. Obviously, this is supposed to stay white. But if you look very closely on the reference image, you're going to notice it's kind of like a rough surface. It's not perfectly smooth. So to make this into a rough surface, we're going to first add a noise texture node. Place that down here at the bottom. Then give me a bump node. Plug color into height and normal into normal. Now you can see this creates some bumps on the surface. If we increase the scale, it's going to become more detailed. Edit, preferences, add-ons, type in node, enable the node wrangler add-on, then select your noise texture node, control T, set the texture coordinate to object. And now this texture is evenly distributed on the entire surface. You can adjust the strength of the normal map and do whatever you got to do to make this look detailed in the way it should look. And now while we're doing the basic textures, let's also make a simple texture down here. We're going to apply the same black plastic to the main shape, but then we're going to select these little surfaces and create a new material, a sign, and that should be sort of like a golden color. So make that metallic, reduce the roughness, and I think that's better. This is supposed to be a dark hole, so let's select this new material. We're going to name this dark, make it completely black, increase the roughness all the way, reduce the specular all the way. Now from a distance, this just looks like a dark hole. This is supposed to be some kind of transparent plastic, so assign a new material to that. We're going to name that transparent, crank up the transmission, lower the roughness, and now this is going to be transparent. Maybe later we're going to add a little light in here. We're going to have to apply this same transparent material to a new layer above these buttons after we add the textures to the buttons. Because if you look very closely, that's exactly what you can see on these buttons over here. There's a thin layer of coating on top of them. In the front here, also give me the dark plastic material. For the buttons here, we need to have a gray material which has the same texture as this. So from the white material, we can copy these nodes, paste them into this material. We're going to name that gray rough plastic. So it's going to be the same as the white material, just dark. 
darker. As you can see, that works pretty well. We also need a black material for this light thing here. That's going to be very reflective because there's like a layer of plastic over it. And later, we're going to add some color when we animate this. Now, let's get down to the dirty business where we add the textures. So new material, we're going to name this buttons, select the principal node and press control T, open up an image, and we're going to load up the shapes which we saved earlier. It's probably time to apply the subdivision surface modifier. We're going to select these faces on top, control E, mark seam, and this one has a grid fill. So we're just going to select an edge loop, control E, mark seam. Over here, also apply the modifier, mark some edge loops around the buttons, control E, mark seam, and we can even join these into the same object. Now with L, we're going to select all these top surfaces from the buttons, then press U, unwrap, and let's load up the UV editor over here. And we're looking at the shapes texture right here. So we have to align these buttons and place the texture correctly button by button. This is supposed to be the square. So let's place that on top of the square and scale it up a little. We also got to rotate it into place. Up here, we got triangle, circle on the side, and X down here. We forgot to make these little arrows. So let's make a triangle real quick. It's supposed to be something like this. Refresh the image. Now we got a little arrow here. So let's take all of these. And these are supposed to be exactly the same. So we can just place them on top of one another and then just place all four of them on top of this little arrow like this. Rotate by 180, scale up, and it's supposed to be something like this, right? Now we're also gonna have to load the same image onto this surface below so that we can apply these lines. That's fine. We just need a node wrangler for the base color. Load up the shapes texture. Now we have to take the entire UV map, scale it down and place it in some white corner where there's nothing gray. And we're just going to take a couple of faces over here. You unwrap and place that over the right part of the texture. Now we only have a little texture here and nothing else is affected. So let's do the same shit on the other side. UV unwrap it and place it over these three little lines. Next, let's apply the normal maps which we prepared earlier. First, let's take care of the logo. So in the black plastic material, select the principal node, press control T, but plug that into normal instead. Add a normal map node and open up the PlayStation logo. Color space should be non-color. Again, the entire UV map should be shoved into some corner somewhere over here on the side. Probably a good idea to apply the subdivision surface modifier now. And we're just going to take this area here, U unwrap and place only that on top of the logo. Now we also have to figure out a way to make this black and shiny. The hole should be completely dark and everything else should be the same as it is now. So we're going to need a color map and a roughness map for this as well. To do that, I'm going to open up the base color of this black plastic material, go to hex, copy the hex code, paste that into paint, and then use a bucket tool to apply this to the background. This should obviously stay completely black and the inside parts also have to be completely black. Then to make the roughness map, we're going to go to invert colors. This has to be black because black means completely shiny. The surrounding has to be white because white means not shiny at all. Now the roughness of this plastic color has a value of 0.618 whatever. I believe that if we copy this value and we use it as a value of a different color, then the hex code of this color should be exactly the same color, which in a roughness map would give us this level of roughness. So paste that into a new color, apply that to the background. And I think this should work. Let's find out. If not, we can always tweak it. Save this as roughness map. Node Wrangler for the base color. Open up the logo. As you can see, this part is a little bit darker now, but we still need a roughness map. So another Node Wrangler. Plus Plug that into roughness and load up the roughness map. And as you can see, this looks quite well. The surrounding area needs to be a little bit darker though, but whatever, I think it still looks pretty cool. I don't feel like sitting here trying to figure this out or even trying to model this for another hour. Fuck that. Now we're going to create a new material slot on this surface, load up the black plastic material, duplicate this, and we're going to name this holes. And in this material, we're going to get rid of the roughness map, get rid of the color map. And instead of the logo normal map, we're going to load up the holes normal map. We're only going to assign that material to this part of the surface up here. So UV unwrap this, rotate it into place, and it should be something like this. We're also going to need a roughness map for these holes because we've got to make the middle darker. So once we load up a roughness map, I loaded up a color ramp and I can control the white marker to make the surrounding area the same as the surrounding surface. It looks like we also got to use this to control the specular because we got to reduce the specularity to zero here. So plug the color into specular, another color ramp node. And if we fuck with the color ramp node a little bit, we're going to get to the point where the specularity is just right for the surrounding area. And it's exactly zero in the holes. This is what we should have done with the logo as well. So plug the color from the roughness map into the specular. Give me a color ramp node and let's play around with that until we get the right result. So this got to be completely black, but I can't get it right for the logo because I'm also messing up the surrounding texture. So to control the specularity, I'm going to use a mix color node, plug that into specular, crank the factor all the way up. Then we're going to adjust color B to the environment. And we can do that by checking out this little surface over here and then changing the value of this color. Once we got that, we're going to use this to make 
like a mask. So the environment of this logo has to be completely black and the inner part has to be completely white. Name this image mask, control T on the mix color node, plug the image texture into factor, open up the mask, on the mask the inner part should be black. And now the black parts of this have specularity because they are replaced with a white color here and the white color means high value which means there is a lot of specularity which means it's reflective and shiny. So now this area is taken care of, let's add our mushroom normal map. We're gonna mark a seam at the base of this mushroom dip. So select these edge loop control E mark seam, L, L, assign a new material, name this mushroom dip and this obviously has to be gray. Give me a node wrangler plugged into the normal, shift A, normal map node and this is where we're going to load up the tread texture which we downloaded earlier. So give me the normal map, non-color, you unwrap and the texture is applied correctly but it looks kind of shitty so i'm gonna get rid of all this and i'm gonna go to these buttons take this bump map and apply that to the mushroom tip instead this makes it look a little bit leathery or something like that and now let's add letters to these buttons over here so apply the subdivision surface in the rough gray plastic we're going to add a new node wrangler load up the button normal map thing set that to non-color add a normal map node color into color and we have to mix this together with this little bumpy texture that we have here so to do that first of all let's only use this letters normal map and we're doing that so that we can correctly apply the letters first so you unwrap this place this over R1 and R2. They're supposed to be upside down. I guess so that when you look at the fucking controller like this, you can see what you're pressing. And now once we got these letters mapped correctly, we're going to pull out a mix node, set that to vector, then plug this normal map into A and the bump map we had earlier into B, result into normal. And now we can control which of these normal maps is going to be more dominant. We need it to be something in the middle. You can always control the individual strength as well. Once we got that out of the way, let's finally add the glass to these buttons. So to do that, that I'm going to duplicate the button object. Instead of the buttons material, we're gonna apply the glass material, then select all the geometry and use Alt S to slightly inflate this. And now we got glass. Finally, we need the logo over here in the front. That's gotta be something about this big. Now this thing is fully textured. Let's think of a way to animate it. So I came up with the animation that I'm gonna make for this. I want my camera to start down here and slowly move up towards the top of the joystick like this. While doing this, it's also going to slowly be zooming in and the scene is going to go from dark to light very slowly. There's going to be some kind of gradient in the background and the background is going to light up as the scene lights up. As all this is happening, a gradient is also going to appear on this little bar over here. It's supposed to look kind of as if this is going to light up or the lights are gonna slowly turn on. So to do that, I'm first going to create an empty cube, place this cube around the controller like a cage, then select the entire controller. Lastly, select the cube, control P, parent. Now we just have to animate the cube and everything is gonna move with it. To get the starting position for my camera, I'm gonna press one to go to front view, control alt zero. That's going to place my camera down here. It has to be a little bit more zoomed in like this. The focal length has a very big impact on how the product looks. If you use a low focal length, it looks very intrusive, almost like a fish eye. But if you have a very high focal length, then you have to place your camera very far away and it creates a very different appearance. So we're gonna try both later and see which one works better. But for now, I'm going to need something for my camera to pivot around. So shift A, empty, arrows, place that in the middle of the scene and scale them up like this so we can see them. Then select the camera, select this, control P, parent the camera to this. Now we just have to rotate this and the camera is going to follow. I think it's going to be better if we don't animate the camera. We just animate the rotation of this thing and maybe we just zoom in the camera without rotating it. This is better because then we have a fixed background. We can place some lights or something there and that's going to work a little bit better. So go to the animating workspace, move the marker to the first frame, press I, keyframe location rotation. You can collapse this so you have less stuff going on down here. Then move to something like frame 120 and rotate this around the x-axis until it's in this position. Again, press I, keyframe location rotation rotation. Now if you bring the marker back and you press space, the animation is going to play and you can see that the controller is slowly rotating. Select all the keyframes with A. You can also box select them. Then press T, set the interpolation to linear. Now this rotates at a constant rate. If we have the Bezier, or I don't know how the fuck you pronounce this, if this is the interpolation method, then it's going to first accelerate to get up to speed and then slow down. I think linear looks way better in this case. I also want this to start at a lower position like this. So we're going to move to the first keyframe, rotate this more backwards, 
keyframe again with I, and now the animation is a little bit different. Now we gotta make the camera slowly zoom in. So on frame zero, it's going to start like this. In the camera settings, we're going to keyframe the focal length by pressing on this button right here. Then on frame 120, we're going to increase the focal length and keyframe it again. Again, select these keyframes, set the interpolation to linear with T, and now the camera is slowly zooming in when we play the animation. You can always slow everything down by selecting everything, select all the keyframes, place the marker in the beginning, and use S to scale this. Now it's going to stretch this animation out over a longer period of time, so it's gonna take more time for this to play out, which means obviously it's gonna be slower. I think this went a little bit too far, so I'm going to end my animation on frame 170. I can do that by just reducing the end over here or by typing in 170. Now I want to have an environment texture which is going to cast light onto my model. This is going to make it look more realistic. It's also going to affect the reflections on the object. So to do that, go to the shading workspace, switch from object to world, add an environment texture node, plug the color into the color of the background texture. Now you can open up any image that you got on your computer, but you're going to need special environment textures for this. So to get those, search for a website called Polyhaven, click on HDRIs, and now you can pick any environment that you want. Make sure to pay attention to what the shadows and the reflections look like on these materials here that's gonna play a huge impact on your render i want some kind of studio lighting like this so you can download that over here then click open load up the image from your downloads and now you can see what that looks like in the environment i think this looks kind of boring because there aren't really any reflections it's just a black color being reflected so it looks pretty shitty instead i'm going to use this mall texture because i think the lighting looks a lot cooler in the render settings i'm going to open up film check transparent now we can't see the background but the light still affects the scene now press zero to go to camera view, press shift A to add a new plane, align that with your view and scale it up, push it into the background like this and scale it up again, press G to move it and then double Z to move it on the local Z axis, push it in the background and scale it up, I want this background to be black, specular zero roughness all the way, and I said that I want the beginning of my animation to be dark, so I'm gonna move to frame one, go to the shading workspace, right click on the background strength, set the background strength to zero, right click, insert keyframe, then move forwards in the animation to somewhere like frame one. 100, go back to the shading workspace, increase the strength to whatever you want, right click, insert keyframe. Now the background is slowly going to turn on. I'm gonna make this slower by moving this second keyframe further away, get a better preview of what this animation looks like so far, go up here to viewport overlays, uncheck floor, remove the axes, and now we can see what's going on so far. It turns out we're gonna need some specularity, and we're gonna have to reduce the roughness in the background, otherwise we're not gonna see no light on that. Then give me Shift A light area. You have to make that really strong for it to be visible because this is a very large surface. Now again, adjust the roughness value to control how this light is reflecting off the surface. I tried to use a spotlight and I think that looks pretty cool. Now I think in our animation, we can have some spotlights appear one by one like this like this, like this, and like this. So I'm gonna place one spotlight up here. Make sure to control the size over here and the blend factor and all this other shit. We're gonna have one very soft spotlight like this. Then we're gonna duplicate this light and lower it down a little bit. Reduce the size on this one and reduce the blend value to make this one a little bit sharper. The outer one is going to be blue like this or almost purple. And the inner one is gonna be a lighter blue. Then we're gonna keyframe these so it starts dark and then they slowly turn on. So select one light. On frame 40, we're gonna keyframe the brightness as it is. But on frame zero, we're going to set the power to zero and then keyframe again now it's going to go from zero to full power in 40 frames do the same thing for the other lights i want to make this a bit faster so i'll move these keyframes closer then i'll duplicate these lights and move them to the side i'll try to be accurate so i'll move them by exactly 30 units take the keyframe of these lights and with g we're going to shift those further along the line so they turn on a little bit later now one light turns on then the other light turns on and we're going to try to make these 20 frames apart for simplicity's sake so we can do the other lights then we're going to compress them later duplicate again move by 30 frames you can do g20 to move them by exactly 20 frames then repeat one more time and move the keyframes again by g20 and now we have one two three four lights appearing in the background i think it's better if we shift all the keyframes to the side so we first have some black background so we're first going to make some studio lights appear above the joystick and to do that i'm going to add a light area we're going to place that above the controller like this crank up the power a little bit i'm going to give this a slightly bluish color duplicate this give me another one down here and maybe we can change the color on this to something slightly different so it looks a bit cooler keyframe the power on both of these lights make sure to 
do that on a frame like 20 or something. Then move to frame zero, set the power to zero, keyframe zero. Do that for both lights. Now those are gonna turn on in the beginning. We're gonna duplicate these lights and give me some more like this. Move the keyframes by 10 frames and just copy this a couple more times so we have more of these lights. I think it's way cooler if these suddenly turn on. I'm going to bring the keyframes that animate the power of these lights above the scene very close together so that these would very quickly turn on one by one. I figured I want to have these lights on the side like this instead. Maybe I'll even put one below the scene and I'll make that very blue. I figured it works better if these turn on more slowly. And now I just gotta keep tweaking this stuff. Maybe add a few more lights. Maybe change a few things about the background. Maybe I'll make the background a lot simpler. If you want to do this in Eevee, then maybe research a different way to make transparency which looks like glass. Because in Eevee, this is not gonna be transparent. Instead, maybe you can just make these buttons very shiny and they're still gonna look pretty nice. And then you can render this a lot faster in Eevee. Now the coolest thing I'm gonna do today in this animation is going to be the light that's going to appear on this bar. To do that, I'm going to make a simple gradient which is going to be blue and black. It's going to be something like this. We have a dark area over here and a light blue area over here. Save that light gradient. We're going to apply that to this material over here, which we're going to name light. In the shading workspace, we're gonna create a node wrangler on this material, load up the gradient. As you can see now, this turns blue, but we can go U unwrap. And then in the UV editor, we can adjust how we want this gradient to appear on this object. I want this to turn on so that this starts shining blue. So this is what I want my thing to look like. And instead of a color map, I'm going to use this as an emission map. I'm going to make this very glossy, move the marker to keyframe zero, set the emission strength to zero, right click, insert keyframe, then move to frame whatever, set the emission strength to one, and insert keyframe. Now this is going to start with no emission, but the emission strength is going to increase as the animation plays. And at some point in the animation, this is going to turn on and that's going to look pretty damn cool. I'm just gonna tweak some of the settings, maybe the roughness, maybe the reflections, maybe I'll add some objects in the background. You can always add some cubes and stuff like that. You can add a material to them and make their emission white. That way they're going to glow and you might see the reflection in the controller. That can drastically change how this thing looks. However, this might only work in cycles. This is the problem with Eevee, the reflections kind of suck. So I'm gonna fuck around with this a little bit more off camera. In one of the future updates, I'm going to explain how keyframes work in detail and we're gonna talk about this shit a little bit more thoroughly in the ebook. But right now I got everything that I know about modeling in that ebook. I'm also almost ready with an update about materials and textures. But anyway, before I start plugging, let me quickly render this. I'm going to set my resolution to 1024 by 1024 because I want this to be a square frame, which is going to be good for a post on Instagram. Since I'm rendering in cycles, I have to set my number of samples to at least 128. This shit is going to take all day to render, especially since we got like 170 frames and it's going to take at least a couple minutes per frame. Then go to the output properties, find the output menu down here, set the file format to ffmpeg video, open up encoding, containers gotta be mpeg4 to make this an mp4, video codec is good, output quality I like to go for high, obviously the higher the better, encoding speed good is fine, we got no audio, we just have to choose the location now. Now I strongly recommend that if you're doing this very seriously, you're gonna have to spend at least another hour messing around with the lights and the reflections and all this, you wanna make sure that this is gonna work properly. Before you start rendering your animation all night, place the marker somewhere around here, hit f12 to see what this looks like at this point, Point, move to an earlier point and render it again to see what it looks like at that point and this is going to give you a better idea of what your animation is going to look like. You can also reduce the resolution to something like 300 by 300 and set your number of samples to something really low like 32. This is going to take a much shorter time and you can get an idea of how the animations look and how the lighting looks and all this. It won't be as detailed but it's going to give you an idea of how you're doing. And then when you wake up in the morning you're going to have a beautiful animation ready and in an image editing program you can add some text or a logo or something else. Now I showed you how to model texture animate and render it this, but let me explain how to make some money with this. I just made a very long video where I talked about two strategies that you can use for looking for clients. You have to make a procedure and you have to plan out how you're going to do this. Go watch that video after this one. The market is going to make a lot more sense if you understand this concept. But the basic idea is this. You find some company which makes some kind of electronics and you find them on Instagram or you find their website or whatever. This PS controller, just an example, probably they already got artists. They don't want to work with you. They're way too big. But maybe you can find a small headphone company which isn't very popular. Maybe they're just starting out. They're a lot easier to communicate with. And you can find this type of shit on Instagram by just searching for headphones or you can look for companies online by just searching something like Idaho gun companies. It's going to give you all the gun companies in Idaho. Over here we got a beautiful document showing us some of the companies in this state. You can search for the name of one of these companies online. You can even add Instagram to the search so you can find their Instagram. And now you can see what kind of content they're posting. You can send them a message. Maybe you got some contact details or whatever. Make one of their products like you see in my videos. Obviously guns are a lot more complicated than simple electronics. But you can also go to 
to Amazon and find some product like a microphone or something, click on the seller and it's going to show you their seller profile on Amazon. Now, this one's doing quite good, but some of these companies can use a lot of improvement in the way they present their products. For example, maybe it'll be cool if they had an animation here. I don't know if Amazon can have animations on this page, but you understand what I'm saying. It's either for their Instagram or their independent website, whatever. Then you can mold this like I always do in my videos. Make some animations, make a cool render with this. And once you got a cool render, you can find somewhere where you can contact this company. You can find their socials right here. You can DM them on Instagram, whatever. And half of you guys watching me are completely socially incapable. So I will write a message for you. Why don't you start with hi? Maybe you can write an exclamation mark so you express some charisma too. Then type this. I made this animation of one of your products so you can use it on your websites and platforms if you like it send me a message and i can also create some of your other products thanks Aryan, or whatever your personal name is or your instagram name or your studio name or your platform it doesn't matter if you got experience in sales, you can do this a lot better. You can maybe analyze your business and try to figure out some kind of way that you can deliver them more value. Maybe point out something which is wrong about their website. Maybe compare them to a competitor. Maybe try to think about how this is going to affect your customers and improve their sales. But you don't have to go this deep. Most of the time, you can just keep it simple. And if you send this to a bunch of people, somebody's eventually going to reply. This is the same as if I get out of the house now and I come up to a girl that I like and I tell her, Hi, I think you're really pretty. What is your name? It doesn't take a scientist to figure this shit out there's plenty of tutorials online where you can just look for how to send cold dms to clients and they're gonna teach you exactly how to do this in a lot more detail but make sure that you have a presentable portfolio and we can talk about exactly how to do that in another video i want to make a video where i'm going to create a new portfolio and an online profile from scratch so if you want to see that let me know in the comments below and now you don't have an excuse to not reach out to people anymore it ain't complicated but it's gonna take some work to set everything up it's gonna take some time if it was easy then everybody Everybody will be making a ton of money so you gotta put in the work if you want to do this let me tell you that it's not a bad life sitting on your fucking laptop on a beach somewhere smoking cigarettes and drinking cocktails while there's ladies in bikinis walking around you you're making a lot of money just with your little laptop over there making a little 3d model animation or dming people and shit like that it's worth going through the trouble to do this type of stuff and guess what this applies to any other skill that you have in life if you can edit videos it's the same thing if you can do graphic design it's the same thing there's a bunch of different things that you can do like this anyway guys look how much value i'm giving you in this video check out the fucking ebook i'm gonna put this model up on patreon so you can download it there i also work closely with my patrons so if you need some help i can help you out we can have a chat i can even make a quick video for you but at least like the video and subscribe to the channel let me know what you want to see next and i'm gonna see you in the next one